Right, I seem to actually be live this time. I did try before, but I didn't seem to be working. If you are here, please do pop up and say hi. Do either give us a thumbs up, give us a smile, maybe say your names. If I can see it, I'll let you know. I cannot see any comments at the moment though. Um, but we'll be starting in just two minutes looking at seeds and all sorts of things like that. So by things like seeds, I mean things that help us to grow plants. So maybe some tubers, maybe some corms. These are all words that perhaps are new to you, but you'll be familiar with them by the end of the session. Oh, fantastic. I can see that we've got 10 people watching. 10 people have managed to find us. It's a start, no comments yet. So please do post a comment and I'll see if I can see them. Or it could just be that I'm still not seeing comments. I'm going to give a few minutes for other people to join on and then we'll start in about one minute's time. Okay people, um, I'm just going to give it sort of 30 seconds more and then we're going to start the session. Okay then, welcome to Ivor Environment Centre's fourth um, Facebook Live. Um, we tried, we did try to pre-record it last time to make it a bit more accessible to people, but we had a lot of trouble uploading it. Um, we've got the Easter holidays now to have a think about how we're going to go forward with either the lives or with pre-recorded videos. Um, if anyone knows how to compress them so they're a little bit smaller. Um, we've been absolutely thrilled with the number of people who've been um, posting their life cycles and things like that. It's been absolutely brilliant. Please do keep it coming. We really like to see it, whether you email it to us, whether you post it to your own social media, you post it to our page. We've tried to go through as many as we can, but sometimes we don't get to see them. And that's just chance. It's not that we didn't like yours. Um, so if we have a look at these seeds, you'll see that they they don't look like much. They're not as pretty as the flowers I was showing you the other day, are you? We've got some spiky ones. We've got some peas here. Um, but the thing with these seeds is they are actually really important. Why are they so important? Why am I dedicating a whole session to seeds? Well, it's because of what they can grow into. Trees, flowers, food that we eat all comes from seeds originally and so all you need is to start with a seed and then you need some a few things to help the plant grow who can tell me I know you all know we did this the other last week what do plants need to grow oh my goodness I can see comments oh hang on I'm silent apparently No, I'm not. I think that was just when I was silent. Um, oh, so Ross9 is here. That's great. Um, I haven't had any comments since then, though. Um, so tell me, what do plants need to grow? Give me the answers. Let me see them. People think that big seeds might grow into big plants. So this big horse chestnut seed does grow, could grow into a, could grow into a great big Oh, fantastic. Well done, Sarah Sims, who got sun and water. Well done, Anne-Marie Redfern. I'm seeing every so often 
things that people have. Well done, Julia Kemp. I'm guessing it's all the children. Um, these are their parents' accounts. But well done, Rachel Dukes, Water, Sunlight, Heat. Fantastic. Um, so these are the things that they need to grow. And they all look different because of a number of things. So some of them look different because of how they're spread. So if I take you over here, you'll notice that these ones look even more different. And it's all because they, to get enough space to grow, they've got to move away from their parent plants. And different plants have different ways of doing that. So some plants might have big sails so that they can float on the wind. Oh, it flew away. Let's see if I can blow this off. There you go. Um, and a lot of plants do have that. So if you look at this, this cardoon flower, it's like a, a giant, big, tall flower. Um, can you see how all those things are coming off of it? And one of the things coming off of it well, this is actually quite a lot of them, looks like this. And on here, you can see at the very bottom, can you see those tiny black things there? Those are the seeds. And the rest acts as a sail to help it fly far away from the flower so that it can find the perfect spot with lots of space and sunlight to grow. And you can see even more of those seeds down here. They really are small. And if I shake this, even more of them come out, don't they? Um, and this is a really good example of how big seeds don't grow into, necessarily grow into big plants. So these are teeny, teeny, tiny seeds here, all the little black dots we've got here, absolutely tiny. But they grow into quite tall um, flowers that would be over my head, and I'm an average-sized adult. Whereas you've got wheat, which have much bigger seeds, but they don't grow quite as high. You're unlikely to have wheat over your head. Um, we have other ones like poppies let's see if I can open up this poppy head and release the seeds in there they shake them a little and they again can you see the I'm gonna put this down and use both my hands there we go to open it up and can you see again teeny tiny little poppy seeds coming onto my hands absolutely tiny and they grow into the lovely poppy so those ones are carried on the wind, they're shaken about, they're carried on the wind. Um, some others get carried in animals. So in the middle of here, these are a little bit old looking because they were produced in the autumn to try get the birds to eat them over the winter. And in the middle of here are some seeds. And what happens, the bird will come along and eat the berry. The seed will go into its tummy along with the berry and it comes out the other end along with a little bit of fertiliser. And so as it's flying along, the birds actually are planting the seeds by accident as they're flying around. Where every time they poo, a lot of seeds come out in the poo. And believe it or not, you guys do this too. So us humans, um, we, uh, who likes tomatoes? Give me a shout if you like tomatoes. Let's see if I can get any more comments. They seem to have frozen again. Give me a shout if you like tomatoes. Well, if you were ever to go to some sewage works, you would find there's lots and lots of tomatoes growing in the sewage works because tomatoes get eaten by you, go into your tummy and come straight out the other side. So if you're ever in a park and you see some tomato plants, you probably do not want to play there, okay? Um, so, so they spread in all different ways and that um, contributes to how they look different because they're adapted to how they travel. And you can find that when you go for walks, you can see if you can find sycamore seeds that um, you can use as helicopters, you can throw into the air and watch them whirl around as they come down. But another thing is their size they all have a different size. Now, even though these all look different, oops, lost a pea, good job I bought a couple. Um, even though they all look different, they all have the same few bits and we're going to find those parts. 
So, all of them have a seed coat around the edge, keeping them nice and safe, holding them together, protecting them from air and things like that outside. They've all got great big food store in the middle and they've all got a tiny baby plant, an embryo plant, somewhere hidden, nice and safe in the middle of the um, seed. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a dissection. So if you've got your pea out of the freezer, um, get it ready now. Um, hopefully it will have defrosted a bit. It'll be quite tricky if not, and you'll get hold fingers. You don't have to use a pea from the freezer. You can use anything you want. You can use seeds if you've got seeds in your back garden. You can use those. Beans are great. Um, but you might want to soak them in water first to ensure that um, there, it's easier to get the... Um, get the seed coat off right got it set up so first thing we're going to be looking for is the seed coat now you might need your um, magnifying glass if you've got one later on or if you've got good eyes you've probably got better eyes than me you'll be able to do it now when you're doing a dissection there's all sorts of different dissections you can do um, dissection is what scientists call taking things apart to see what it's like inside to see how it works um, and we're probably going to do a couple of dissections um, but today we're doing a seed dissection some of you it may be your first some of you might be experienced dissectors either way let's go so first we've got to find the seed coat around the edge so can you see me peeling it off if you can do the same thing at home just use your fingers if you might need an adult's help if you've got no thumbnails you might need an adult's help to get in um, if you want to use be precise you can use these I prefer to just use my fingers and so let's see if you can get first the seed coat off and I'm taking all of the seed coat off can you see how it's nice and thick and strong to protect my seed then you've got the food store so this is where they keep all the food now hang on last week when we were doing parts of the plant how did we say plant the seed when they're making the plant is making seed so that it has enough food until the first green shoots poke out and are able to start getting energy from the sun now if I open it up you can see right here the embryo the baby plant now what you can do if you want to if you've got some seeds you can grow them a little bit we call it germinating so you can see the roots and the shoots starting to grow on paper towels we'll show you how to do that later and it might be interesting to do dissection um, when they get a bit bigger to see how the different bits grow to find out whether the root comes first or the shoot um, so here we have it our food door our seed coat and our embryo our baby plant so give me a thumbs up if you manage to find the food store. Give me a smiley face if you manage to find... This isn't the food store, is it? This is the seed case. Seed case, thumbs up. Smiley face if you found the food store. And let's have some laughter if we see that. Right, I'm going to do it again with the pea. This hopefully will look a little bit more like your one you're doing at home. Because this is an actual pea that I'm now... Again, you can see that the seed coat is quite thick. It's thinner than the bean, but it's nice thick and it's quite rubbery as well. And that keeps it nice and safe. I've taken a little bit of the, the um, food store off with my thumb there. And again, I'm going to try open it up. And there you go. The embryo, the baby plant right there in the middle. Let's see if I can... Is that clear? And hopefully you'll be able to find it at home. So the food store is the, is, the, is the amount of time it takes for the shoot to be able to start making its own food. It, it keeps the plant going till then. And so big seeds, you might expect to wait a little bit longer before you see a shoot. Whereas teeny tiny seeds, like, let's have a quick look like the carrot seeds you might expect to see a bit sooner there are the carrot seeds in there right 
but how are seeds formed now this is something we're going to look at again a bit later when we look at flowers um, and it's also something that we thought about a bit earlier so if you look at these daffodils you'll see that this one has got quite a thin bit just behind the daffodil it's quite thin isn't it whereas this one is quite fat it's nice and fat isn't it it's gotten much bigger and if we carry on round to this one here you can see it's even bigger still so what's happened to these plants who can tell me what's happened to these plants well they have been pollinated so basically a bee has come he's visited the plant and why is he visiting the plant what does he want the plant? no not honey we eat the honey that the bees make out of this but they're taking they're taking something they from the very center inside the plant that's right they're after nectar and so once they they're going in there they're getting nectar some of them take a little bit of pollen to feed to the baby bees but mostly they're after the nectar and their face get covered in let's get him right in there pollen lots and lots of yellow pollen can you see that in there the yellow pollen that's fallen out and then when the, the pollen goes to another plant you can see the pollen on my finger if I do some pollinating here and I can put it on the sticky stigma in the middle in fact I'll show you on this that'll be a bit easier so the bee comes along is getting the nectar and whilst he's getting the nectar he's getting covered in pollen just like this bee here absolutely covered in pollen and then he takes the pollen to his next plant and he starts drinking some getting some more nectar and some of the pollen will fall off some of it might fall on the leaf on the petals but some of it might go onto the sticky stigma and if it goes in the stigma it goes all the way down and it joins one of the eggs in here in the ovary we'll be looking at this more when we look at flowers and together they make a seed so we should assume, where did I put my knife? I know, I've got to go get my knife in a second. That in here, there are lots of seeds. Should we find out? I'm going to take this off here so that I can take it over and dissect it. Do not pick daffodil heads in the public park. If you've got some in your garden, feel free to do this, but don't do it in the public park. Where's my knife gone? Hmm. I did have a knife. I had it and I left it out. Oh, well, I'll have to use my fingers. Oh, there it is. It just moved to the other end here. Sorry, guys. Um, so if I cut this open, hopefully, if we open it up, we should see lots of lovely starting to form in there. Now hang on, I can hear you say, I've grown daffodils and I didn't grow them from seeds. Well, you're quite right. We could plant those seeds and they would grow into a daffodil like this but it would take at least five years before we got a flower like this so instead what we do is we plant the bulbs which will grow each year into a daffodil so once the once the flower has been pollinated a lot of people deadhead the um daffodil so that the um they, it doesn't waste energy making those seeds and then you wait until the leaves go yellow because even after the flower's gone these leaves are 
getting food to send down into the bulb. They're absorbing sunlight and sending food all the way down into the bulb to make the bulb fatter and fatter to store enough food over the winter so that the next year it can pop right up again and it can um, and it can start to grow. So that is why we use bulbs. Same with tulips. Um, you could grow a tulip from seed, but it would take years and years and years. Um, so instead, we plant the bulbs. Someone else grows the, them from seed and pollinates them, and we plant the bulbs. So now we're going to get on to you guys planting some things at home. So let me fix this onto here and you'll see that I've got quite a lot of different things that we should be able to use to grow some things at home. Right. So your challenge this Easter is to grow something, anything, anything you like. Um, but I don't have any pots, says someone. But I don't have any seeds. Well, that's okay. You don't need them. I'm going to show you how you can grow pretty much anything. Uh, I'm going to start with these peas and beans that we're looking at earlier. Because um, I'm going to show you how we grow them here at Ivor Environment Centre. We don't use put them in soil um, because we want to be able to pick them up and watch them as they grow. So what we do is we take a tray, any old tray you can use. So I've got loads, too many, more than I should have, of these Chinese takeaway containers. Some of you might be the same as me. Um, so I just use those. I put a bit of kitchen towel in there, a bit of paper towel. And I make sure it's nice and moist. So I just spray it with some water. Um, unfortunately, I must have left the spray inside. Oh, well, you get the idea. I'll just drip some water on it now. Um, and then the first thing you do is you soak the seeds in water. So you do that for about 40 minutes. It doesn't have to be precise. And you'll want to do that with a lot of the seeds that you want to start growing. You soak them in water and then you lay them out on the towel. Now, if I were you, I would make sure that they're not touching because that way, if one of them goes mouldy, it's not gonna spread it to the others. You can just remove that one and carry on growing the rest of them. Once you've got them there, you cover them. So we tend to cover with a wax wrap. You can use anything you've got. You can use cling film, a hole in the end and do a bit of squirting that way. Um, it's quite fun to exper experiment. You might even have a water pistol. That would work quite well. Um, so that's how you can grow these seeds without having any soil at all. Now, if you do want soil, supermarkets like Lidl do sell compost. So feel we get all some. If you have garden, you can just dig up some soil from your back garden. Um, but if you don't have any of that, these paper towels are fantastic, and you can watch the shoots and the roots starting to grow here. Um, there's lots of other things you can grow and so I'm just going to take you through a few of the things from my garden that I'm going to use. So these are seed potatoes. Now if you look at them, they look pretty much like our potatoes, don't they? But they have, they, these are the ones that you can buy from a garden centre if you were to want to start growing potatoes. But of course you, you don't have to buy them from a garden centre. If you're like me, you can just use your own potatoes. And it's very nice. These egg cartons are fantastic to put them in. It keeps them separate and you have the shoots coming up and you keep them in here until the shoots are sort of that deep and big enough to start planting it out. If you're like me, you like potatoes and you don't want to waste a good potato you know if you can eat it now eat it I love it so what you have to do is you just get cut off a patch of potato 
that's got the eyes starting to grow. So can you see, so if you're using a sharp knife, make sure you get a grown up to help you with that and use a chopping board. Do not do it in your hands like this. This is very dangerous. Um, I can now roast this for my dinner tonight. Fantastic, I'll put it over here. Um, and now I've got to grow this. Now, this needs to be about 10 centimeters deep in soil. I don't have a pot that's big enough so what can I do so I'm looking around the house and I can use a willy so what I'm going to do this willy that you might if you've got any wellies that you've grown out of you can put the soil into the willy and you can once you've got it nice and deep enough so this one you will need to get some soil for So again, you wait until this, the shoots are pointing out and they're maybe that big and then you can start putting them into a bigger trench and eventually you start building the soil up against the stem so that not too much light gets onto the stem and the potatoes, as we said last Tuesday I think it was, the potatoes are tubers that come out of the stems. Um, now, if you want to grow some sweet potato, it's slightly different so you can start it off by cutting it in half and then you've still got half the sweet potato to eat which I am going to roast again with the other potato tonight I'm gonna to have a yummy dinner tonight and then this potato I need to suspend over water so you can do it with anything so I'm gonna use this mug here um, I thought it was quite apt um, and what you need is some toothpicks so you use the toothpicks in your sweet potato to hold it above the water and you make sure that the water is coming just up to the bottom of the sweet potato And you can top up the water as often as you need to. Um, so what you do, you spend it over water and pretty soon you'll see the roots coming off of the water. Um, when the sprouts, some sprouts will start to come, again it's good to use older sweet potatoes for this, when the sprouts come out, when they're about 10 centimetre long, you twist them off and you put them again in water. You just stand them up in water. And then when these sprouts that you've twisted off and put in the water, when their roots are about 10 centimetres long, that's when you can plant them in the soil. Okay, so they can grow for quite a long time in water and you'll be able to see lots of changes happen. Um, if you've got things like parsnips, now my parsnip doesn't have much on the top of it. A lot of supermarkets do trim a lot of the top. Um, so have a look for it when you're out shopping for your food. Think, oh, that might make a good growing parsnip. Um, so what I'm going to do with my parsnip, I'm going to cut off the top. Again, I can use this for, um, for roasting and it'll be nice and yummy. Can you see how it's, again, you can see the little roots coming off of it, off of the root vegetable. Um, and then you put the tops in water. So you keep the water nice and shallow. I mean, you could use this or you could use a very small tray like my um, another one of my Chinese takeaway trays see now I don't feel quite so guilty about all the Chinese I've eaten over the years and you just leave it in water and it should start to grow um, there's all sorts of things you can put in water like this so beetroot you can turnips you can celery just break off the bottom of the celery put it in water until the leaves thicken um, avocado again with the toothpicks suspend it over water this takes a long time to grow about six weeks but it's really worth it if you want to see the results a lot quicker lettuce or cabbage leaves just pop them in water pop them in the bowl of water and you'll see the roots coming on the leaves nice and quickly put the bowl of water in the sunshine 
and mist it, spray it with water every few days so that the cabbage leaves and the lettuce leaves grow. For other seeds, you can plant them. So you can either use, um, use the kitchen towel or you can um, use them in a pot. So here at Ivor Environment Centre, we use paper pots because that way, when it gets too big for the pot, we can plant the whole thing in the ground and the roots will just spread out. The paper will disintegrate, the roots will just spread out. Um, so, the, um, so you could use paper pots, you can use mugs, you can use cups that children have used, you can, or you can do the paper towel on a tray. It's entirely up to you how you plant these seeds that I'm just gonna talk about. Um, now, if you've got strawberries, or raspberries what you want to do you can see the seeds on the very edge so you scrape them off and then you need to wash them well okay because you want to get the seeds not any of the flesh that could get a bit moldy so you wash them well before planting same with the raspberry seeds you can see them inside there just wash off all the fruit and then you've got the seeds ready to plant make sure that you have cleaned them well. Other ones that are very easy to do are the tomatoes. I mentioned earlier how easy they are to grow. Um, so just again, just get the seeds out. You might even, some people don't use seeds when they're cooking with tomatoes, they just use the um, main bits. So wash them off and pop them in, a, pop them in into, into either a pot or a tray, it's up to you. Um, if you are growing something like a citrus fruit like a lemon or a satsuma um, you need to make sure that the seeds are completely dried okay same with peaches and plums now apples are quite interesting you've all seen apple seeds but you may not be hugely successful because apples the flowers on the blossoms on apples will be pollinated by anything so inside one flower it will have a different blossom in there it will have so crab apples might have, um, might have um, pollinated some of them um, Cox's apple another Braeburn another um, and so it won't necessarily grow so inside one apple you might have seeds that will grow into lots of different plants can't find any more apple seeds oh well um, and some of them will grow nicely some of them might produce apples some of them might produce very funny apples um, some of them might produce very good apples now because of this unpredictability of trees so they stick a tree they know makes good apples onto the top on top of the roots of another tree that they know is a very good tree um, but some apples do come from seeds granny smith apples were discovered on a rubbish dump in South Africa. So they had actually grown, this variety had grown from a seed that someone had thrown out. So do try it. You may, don't get upset if you're not successful or if you get funny looking apples that don't taste very good, um, but do try it. Um, same with pears. Um, cucumbers are like the tomatoes. Again, you get the fruit out that way. So what I'd like you to do is go into your kitchen and hang on let me try turn this round you got me again excellent so what i'd like you to do is go into your kitchen and see what you can grow so some things you won't be that successful with some seeds like rice um, might have been irradiated so that they won't shoot so that they won't grow, start roots in the cupboard um, things if you've got bags of pearl barley it'd be interesting to find out whether they're treated in the same way some things come to you already cooked so your baked beans will have already been cooked a little bit and so you won't have much success with those but all of the other things that you can find you can try and grow all sorts of different things um, and we'd like you over the Easter holidays to try and keep a diary of how you're growing so for example if you're um, pretty good at um, 
growing things, if you've grown it before, you might want to be quite scientific about it. You might want to have a diary with each date, write the observations, day zero, no shoot, day one, two shoot, and try use the technical language wherever you can. Try use scientific measuring, so measure it maybe in millimetres, make sure you use the units when you're writing it down. Um, other people who are just want to try it and see what happens, who aren't quite up to that level, um, might want to just take photos each day or draw what they see each day and that's all absolutely fantastic you might even want to keep a video diary of it or have stop motion photos so take a photo at the same time every day um, I really look forward to seeing how creative you guys are you've been really creative with all the other things and so I think that over the half term, half term Easter holidays you're going to do an absolutely fantastic job at this um, as before, if you can post it onto our Facebook page or email it to us, I really want to see what you choose to grow. Oh, I've got a leaf cub is going to grow. Again, not much roots on the end. I can cut it off. I can put it in water. I'll see what happens with this one. I'll let keep you posted on what happens with my ones and if you can let me know what happens with yours. Have a lovely Easter holidays and we'll be back after the Easter holidays with our... Um, facebook lives or pre-recorded videos um, sessions but during the holidays we will be posting every so often to give you some ideas of things you can do maybe when you're on your walk with your family or in your back garden if you have one